So I'm really honoured to present our next speaker, uh, Professor Elizabeth McKinley. Liz is both Executive Director of the Atlantic Fellows for Social Equity and Professor of Indigenous Education at the University of Melbourne. She's known for her work exploring the interaction between science, education and Indigenous culture. She has a strong research and publication record in the field of <clears throat> sociology of education, Indigenous science education, Indigenous curriculum and the capacity of mainstream education systems to meet the complex challenges of, inform of transforming educational outcomes for Indigenous and other students from un underserved communities. I'm proud, uh, really honoured to, to hand over to you, Liz, for your talk on Indigenous-led social change. Thank you. Thanks, Michael, Sean. Great pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I just want to uh, firstly um, make some acknowledgements to country today, uh, but to the people as well, obviously, in my own language, if I can. Um, ena mana, ena reo, ena rangatira ma, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. So that's uh, in Māori, in te reo Māori, Māori language. I just wanted to acknowledge the standing of the people here today, their language and their chiefs. And I acknowledge you all in uh, saying tēnā koutou. Greetings to everybody. I also want to acknowledge all the Indigenous lands of which uh, everybody is coming from today. Myself, I'm coming from uh, Wurundjeri lands uh, here in Melbourne. And so we also acknowledge the others, um, the other Indigenous peoples from around here and around, uh, sorry, from where you are actually located today. Uh, my talk today is really on social uh, change, social equity. Uh, I'm going, coming to you to talk to you about a program that we run. But before I do that, I think uh, our experiences in the last 18 months um, have been, um, uh, I would just want to highlight some of the issues that are happening because of uh, COVID-19 has really, the pandemic has exposed and exacerbated uh, many existing inequalities uh, that exist disproportionately affecting populations, of course, uh, from all over the world that have been suffering from poverty, uh, discrimination, illness, and financial instability, and not least of all, Indigenous peoples. Unfortunately, the consequences uh, for Indigenous peoples has been somewhat dire, as tribes have stripped, uh, been stripped of their old people. If any of you have been following uh, the news reports, particularly overseas, not all Indigenous groups are as uh, fortunate as those that have been living here in Australia and in New Zealand. Uh, but by, by, uh, with the old people dying in these Indigenous communities, they are really the tribe's cultural knowledge holders. They're also the language, um, language people. And it, because the um, disease has run rife and come across, uh, sorry, and it, gone across many of the tribes that haven't been protected. Um, they've, they've died and the finality of it all has been sudden. And I just think, unfortunately, that um, there have been many tribes across the world that are in dire uh, straits at the moment around um, maintaining their knowledge and their language. Um, as uh, Michael Sean has talked to us, he's already told us about what we're celebrating here today and the United Nations Indigenous Day of the World's Indigenous Peoples, International Day, sorry, of the World's Indigenous Peoples. The whole purpose of this is to help educate um, on the issues that, concern, that are of concern to Indigenous peoples, to mobilise um, political will, if you like, and the resources to address the global problems and to celebrate and reinforce our achievements across the world. I just want today to talk to you about something that we are doing here at the University of Melbourne. And this is the program that we've got up running around the Atlantic Fellows uh, for Social Equity. This program um, is, is a program that is indigenous led social change. That is our vision, if you like, that is uh, the guidance the star that guides us. We have substantive leadership uh, that is 
um, in charge of this program, if you like, including myself as the Indigenous, as the Executive Director. But we have a board uh, that has four out of five people on it that are Indigenous. We have um, a number of PO. We call them PO. It's a Māori word uh, meaning pillar, if you like, pillar of the house, the uh, pillar that holds up the house if you like. So we have a number of PO that are all Indigenous from across New Zealand and Australia. You'll see some um, photos there, some of you may well know uh, these people and who these people are. We have a leadership uh, that includes both Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island uh, people as well as Māori and Pacific Island. Um, and we also have partnerships uh, with New Zealand. So the program is an Indigenous-led program that covers uh, Australia and New Zealand, and we eventually wish to go to the Pacific um, Island nations. We are, of course, committed uh, to Indigenous peoples, and the course is open to um, Indigenous uh, students, what we call mid-career Indigenous students uh, or fellows uh, to apply. Uh, so these are people who've had some experience at social change or have been doing social change, most Indigenous people have been doing social change, in actual fact, working in their communities. So it's open to uh, Indigenous fellows. We also take in some non-Indigenous uh, people uh, as part of the program as well. So it's basically open to everybody. But we are committed to Indigenous people. The non-Indigenous people we take on have to have had a track record with Indigenous affairs and working with Indigenous uh, groups and communities. Um, I guess the aims of our, or the values that we hold, if you like, that we uh, have, we aim to create a community and fellowship, apart from being in, uh, committed to Indigenous peoples, we aim to create community and fellowship, that is ideas of connection, collaboration and learning. We're also developing a very strong and I would say courageous and bold program, which I'll talk a little bit about at, uh, very soon. We seek to impact and influence, obviously, um, as, as we can. And we are looking to build partnerships and uh, networks across the world, as I will show you. I think uh, in terms of uh, the Indigenous-led uh, social change, these are some of the values. When you work across countries, um, while the uh, values for particular communities might differ slightly, we think we have a set of values here that, uh, that are basically uh, reflect uh, Indigenous communities across the places in which we are working. So, um, so these six values are basically what it is that we, uh, we, we work with. We basically have uh, two parts to our fellowship. Uh, we have a, a very strong uh, foundation year. It is a 12-month uh, program where that foundation year where the students are asked or the fellows are asked to do a lot of work. But what they do after that is they graduate into what we call a lifelong senior fellowship. And that is because we are connected across the world to other programs. We are a program uh, that is well-resourced um, not by necessarily by the University of Melbourne, although they are allowing, uh, they are hosting us, but we are well funded by an American philanthropic program called Atlantic Philanthropies, which is where the name comes from. So let me just talk a little bit about our foundation year and what uh, we actually do. Uh, the foundation year actually consists of a year-long study, if you like. So when you actually apply to get into the program, we actually ask you to do a number of things, not only give us a CV, but also to give us a social change idea. In other words, what are you committed to and what are you working on? So we ask the, the fellows um, or the applicants uh, to the program to put up the program or the project, if you like, the social change project, which they would like to do. And um, I have to admit that we do have a lot, of, um, a lot of fellows who are working on a wide range of programs or projects. So um, one of the things that we do require them to do is to go through a study program. 
in the Masters um, of Social Change Leadership, as you can see on your screen. Um, and if that's a little bit too heavy for um, some of the fellows, then we ask them to do the Graduate Certificate of Social Change Leadership. The whole idea about doing a, um, a qualification is to provide a very firm uh, platform, if you like, a platform for which uh, they can learn about other programs, other ways that Indigenous peoples um, uh, uh, attack, or if you like, um, work on their own social projects, the things that others are doing. So for example, we uh, last week just came through, just came through a, an Indigenous leadership module, which is a whole week of change. And we learned a lot about uh, programs, other Indigenous groups and how they're operating in leadership, particularly around governance uh, across Canada, the US, Australia and New Zealand by having speakers that came in from all those programs, uh, all those countries talking about uh, the work that's going on in each of those countries. So the students or the fellows get, ex um, get exposed to a lot of other programs that are running. Um, we do have some fellows, I think we've got one this year that's doing the graduate certificate. It is a heavy program, can I say, um, for the fellows. It's a program that uh, requires a lot of study. You require a lot of support uh, from your employer uh, if you're working. Some of our fellows are working full-time and they are doing a um, full-time master's at the same time. That requires, that's a very heavy workload and that requires real commitment. So we do ask for the fellows to be committed in that way, but to also have the support of their employers um, as well as their families that they need. So we currently have 18 fellows on the program. We have um, six Māori uh, fellows, eight Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, fellows, and four non-Indigenous fellows from across uh, New Zealand and Australia. Uh, next year, we're hoping to have about 22. Um, can I say that um, while we are, uh, have great expectations uh, for the fellows who are doing this work, uh, we do give them a lot of support as well. So it's not just an ordinary degree. It is a degree that um, is specifically designed for the Atlantic program. No other students are allowed to enroll in it. So it's specifically designed for the fellows who get into the program. We offer them help uh, financially. Uh, we also offer them a lot of education help and we offer them uh, personal support as well. And I have to say that, um, that we've learned a lot over the last 18 months with the fellows that have come in. Uh, and sometimes uh, many uh, or a number of them single traders, sole traders, if you like, have lost their income. So being able to do this has been great and um, the fellows have uh, very much appreciated it. So there are uh, sorts of fees. Um, we offer the sorts of fees, for example, fee-free uh, master's degree, uh, stipend for participating. Once you actually get in, you get automatically get some stipend money. Uh, and then there is a further stipend money, depending on need. Uh, we offer people uh, tutoring, obviously, study groups are run all the time. Uh, we have, a, obviously, the students are enrolled as, um, at the University of Melbourne, and they also get uh, a lot of, so they have access to university resources. But I think on top of that, and something that has been um, proven to be of use uh, in the last year or so, uh, some of the personal supports that we have managed to give uh, these students, uh, particularly around um, things like mentoring and mental health services, um, and also peer support. So it is um, a program uh, that is well resourced, as you can see um, in that way. The lifelong fellowship, once the, once the fellows get through this, this year, um, they actually then graduate into a global network. So uh, we are associated with uh, six other programs. There are seven of us altogether. So there are Atlantic Fellows for Racial Equity. We have a number of programs that address health equity. 
We have others that address uh, social and economic equity, for example. We have one that addresses brain health. So there are lots and lots of programs. Three of them are in the United States. Uh, one is in Thailand, one is in the UK, one is in South Africa. And then we have our program in Australia here down in Melbourne. We also um, have an umbrella network, if you like, called the Atlantic uh, Institute, which is based at Rhodes House at the University of Oxford uh, in the UK. And it is, uh, at the moment, headed up, their executive director is a senior fellow from our program, uh, uh, Evie O'Brien. Uh, she has, she's a New Zealand Māori uh, and has uh, graduated out of our program. So we're very fortunate and very proud to have uh, Evie heading up uh, the Institute with oversight over the seven programs. They graduate into a, a network the program is funded for 20 years, I have to say. There's no programs that get funded for that long. So we are very, very fortunate to say, to have uh, the funding that will last us at least 20 years. There are, as I said, seven hubs around the world. There's something like four and a half thousand fellows, and it is a truly a global network. Even though we're a regional program that is across Australia and New Zealand, um, the program, uh, the, the graduation into the network is actually a global network. We are the only program that focuses in on Indigenous issues, that we are committed to Indigenous peoples. So uh, we expect our fellows to be able to take uh, a leadership role uh, once they graduate into that uh, network, that big uh, lifelong network as we go in. Here's some pictures of the fellows that we have. Um, that have gone through the program and the ones at the bottom are some of the ones that are in the program uh, now. Um, they are all uh, great, um, great fellows and great students, I have to say. Um, and I'm sure uh, if you know any of those people that you would be able to ask them um, about the program itself. I do have to say, though, at the moment, our, our website has gone down over the weekend. If anybody's very interested in learning a bit more about the program, because I've only just skimmed across the top, um, if you uh, use this um, email address, it will go to one of our um, one of our staff members, who will be able to give you a link behind the um, be behind the website to be able to get you to access the application process. So um, I just leave it at that. I know it sounds like it's a wee bit of a uh, a cell, um, but I wanted to really uh, highlight uh, some positive work that's happening um, out of the, um, out of, well, University of Melbourne here uh, in association with the University of Auckland in New Zealand, um, and a positive, uh, if you like, solution uh, to some of the issues that we're facing at the moment. And it, it sort of gives me a lot of hope, I have to say, with a lot of these younger fellows, younger than me anyway, um, younger fellows too, um, as they are, as they're going through. So I'll hand it back to you, uh, Michael, Michael, Sean. Have I gone over time? <laughs> no, no, that's fine, Liz, that's fine. We're, we're right to the end, there's a couple of questions. That, what a fantastic program. And and the fact that it's got the longevity of support that it has is is really really amazing and um, and such a promising program to produce a lot of high quality indigenous fellows that will hopefully make a social change and i'm sure they are already and will continue to do so so there's a quick question here if you could just yeah. um briefly uh, and it, I, I don't see it as a sell at all i think it's important we get this out there and get as many quality people in so so thank you very much um are the applicants social change projects purely theoretical or is there a practical component to the program? No, they are practical. Um, most of them are actually practical. They are actually doing um, something in terms of a um, sort of akin to a development project maybe or a uh, research project. We do have to be careful with that for a little bit. There is money to support the projects as well. I have to say, um, Michael, Sean, yeah. So no, they're practical as well. You could do a the theoretical one if you wanted to. Perfect. That's uh, that's great. Thanks, Liz. And we're we're out of time there. But if, it, as uh, Liz has mentioned, if you want any more information, go contact that email, and hopefully the website will be back up and running. And thanks a Within lot. Within another day or so. Thanks. Yeah. yeah.
Perfect. Thanks a lot for that, Liz. I really, really appreciate it.